Welcome to tonight's presentation of the Pro Basketball Association. If you want pro, you want the PBA. Welcome in to the PBA Game of the Week, Gary Aide, Rich Anselmo, as we get set to watch the Dallas-Fort Worth Just Hoops take on the Texas Hyenas. Dallas-Fort Worth, Rich, sports a bunch of really good players, star power, including Showtime, the number one overall pick in the draft, Showtime Carter, who joins the team after not being able to come to terms with the original team he was drafted by, also a Texas PBA team, and instead he joins the Just Hoops, who also feature former Baylor star or contributor anyway, Terry Mastin Jr., who is on the roster as well. So this is a team with a lot of firepower. And a lot of size. Showtime is big. Mastin Jr. is even bigger. And you have players that have played at a very high level here. Both of them, are, I think, are really going to show their stuff today. And I'm anxious to see them play in this league. Absolutely. And last week we had a number of really good players in the PBA game of the week as well. This week seems to be the same thing. Not as much name recognition for the Hyenas. It's a intrastate battle as the Hyenas also hail from the Lone Star State. But what they lack in name recognition, they make up for in togetherness. So the scouting report says this will be our first time seeing them up close this year, Rich. But from everything I've heard, this is a team that really plays well together and is likely to give the Just Hoops a run for their money. And I'm anxious to see them play defense. They have experience together and they are really good on both ends. But defensively, from what I've heard, they are really, their hands are quick. They are really quick to the ball. I'm anxious to see both of these teams play. I think we're going to have a good one tonight. Absolutely. As we get set for the opening tip just moments away, stay tuned at the half for our featured guest of the week, which will be a surprise. Uh, that will be coming up at the half today. And also one thing to note, for this game, Rich, and for this league as a whole as we sort of head into the second week is you have to understand that being this is a new league, a lot when we say these guys have experience playing together, it's not they've played more practices or maybe they've played pickup games. A lot of these guys who fill out these PBA rosters were annexed as a team or were teams in other minor leagues, whether it be the PBL, the, uh, the TBL, or the ABA, or what have you. So these guys are experienced together as a unit a lot of times, not so, not talking specifically any of these players in particular, but just in general across the league, you will see that as the year unfolds that there's a lot of teams and players that are further along simply because they've been playing together for a while. And a good example of that, Gary, is uh, Davian Carter. Yes. He played for this team previously for just hoops. So there is a familiarity there, and you'll see that among some of the teams in the league. We'll see it on more teams as we get to more of them during the year, too. Yeah, and this is, again, the second week, and we will have game number two of the PBA featured games of the week tomorrow night as myself and Paul McKeskey will call game number two. All righty, and off the tip, it is the Dallas-Fort Worth Just Hoops getting the opening tip and into the lane in a quick show of strength as they get off to the 2 nothing lead. Nice inside move by Maston. Good pass, too. Dallas-Fort Worth with two points as we see the scoreboard is updated. Clock has now started, so it's probably about 10 seconds ahead of schedule as they tick it off there rapidly. Controlling in the front here. The Hyenas trying to get back on the board down low. And there's a whistle on the floor, and it will be going the other way. Dallas Fort Worth. They didn't count that basket. I was surprised. Yeah, I guess the foul was before the shot as the Dallas Fort Worth hoops get back into their offense. Again, top of the circle, now off to the right. 
shot is long by Mastin. And here come the Hyenas. And a steal by Dallas-Fort Worth. Good hands. Wide open three is good. Dallas-Fort Worth out to a fast start. It should be 7-0 right now. As it looks like the Hyenas trying to get on the board. A high screen and roll coming down into the lane. Nice running layup is up and good. Good move. Good move, a nice dribble drive, protected the ball. Alley -oop down low, what nice a pass and finish. So Dallas Fort Worth now with nine points and two for the Hyenas as we make it four. That looked like a two pointer. We'll see if they give them two or three. So the scoreboard reads five nothing, but really it should be nine. So I guess they'll give it to three, to four. There you go, nine to four. That's. Nine to four should be the score to make it nine to six. Well, uh, seven because that one basket didn't count. They're not counting it yet. I thought they did count it. It looked like they did, but uh, either way, we have a timeout on the floor, and so it should be seven to six. I think the ref stopped it to look at that. This has seemed to be a problem so far tonight. It's been pretty slow yeah. getting the uh, score to change. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out, but you know, the better to get it right and take a little time to do so. And that's one thing you notice right away is the professionalism of these officials. The second there was any inkling of an issue, they stopped the game and they're gonna go right into figuring out where this is going. And in the meantime, we have some free throws being shot. As Dallas hits, all right, so this team's to get back onto the court. That point didn't register yet either. Yeah, well, I'm sure this will get sorted out as we uh, wait for official word here to get the ball back in. And Dallas Fort Worth will handle at the controls is Tucker. Tucker into the lane, kick out. Up, no good. Rebounded by the Hyenas. Nice outlet pass long down the court, but good transition defense from Dallas. And then the guy slips behind and a slam dunk. <laughs> what a run by the big man oh. coming down the court. Oh, they didn't pick up the trailer. Called the secondary fast break in parlance of basketball as a steal. You gotta pick up that trailer. No doubt about it then. Off the steal, a good defensive play initially by Dallas, but then the Hyenas are able to convert on the offensive bucket. And second chance. That's the second one they've got so far. There you go. And we have another timeout here on the court as the scoreboard reads eight to seven hyenas. And this is it doesn't take long to come back. Well that's it the really doesn't. A couple of defensive plays, uh making the most of their opportunities, second chance opportunities too. That's how you do it. Well, that's the beauty of it, Rich, and that's the beauty of the sport of basketball. As you just said, it doesn't take long to come back. One quick change in the momentum of the game, one play, one mistake, and all of a sudden you're right back in the game. Good defense on one end, taking advantage of it on the other. And, you know, one thing I've been impressed with, and I'm curious if you've noticed it too, the Hyenas have not been at all bullied or intimidated by the size advantage of Dallas. Uh, Dallas no, not at all. Not at all. What they're doing, they're using their speed and quickness, too, to their benefit. Defensively, they are quick, and they are all over them. Well, it looks like we have the score updated as 10 to 7, so it looks like everything's back copacetic as a step back three is up. No good. Tried to draw the foul. No call as McDonald will head back on defense, pointing into the short corner as the Hyenas spin into the lane. A no-look pass and blew the layup. Good hustle, but to no avail. Here comes the Fort Worth hoops. Hoops pulling it back. Again, at the controls is Tucker. Shake and bake. Down the baseline. Outside pass. Nice little pass. No good. Rolled around. No good, but looks like there's a foul, and Dallas Fort Worth will head to the line. They got bailed out. That was... It was a good shot. It didn't fall. It didn't fall as Mastin Jr. will head to the line. 
And like, yeah, as he makes the first, like the Mastiff dog, Mastin is an absolute bull in a china shop on the court. And he's built like a basketball player, too. No question about it. As he Long makes a arms, rangy. To go along with all that size. It's an incredible package, for sure, as the hyena is a nice turnaround, but a air ball down low and an offensive rebound looks like a foul is called didn't catch you where it's on but it will send the hyenas to the line who still hold a one point lead that was on Mastin Mastin will pick up the personal first foul of the game I believe for the hoops as the hyenas miss Set for the second one. Both teams playing with a short bench today as the second one is good and it makes it a one possession in game. Porter Jr. put him up by two. Another steal. Nice pull up at the free throw line and it's good. And I'll tell you what, Rich, Dallas is being a little sloppy with the ball to start this game. They are. And that's the defense I was talking about earlier in the pregame from the Hyenas. They're active. Yeah, no question about it. They definitely are, as the Hyenas now have a four-point advantage, largely because of those hands you were talking about. As you mentioned in the pregame and just reiterated, Rich, that's really what's leading this early advantage they have. It's a inside move, nice up and under, executed to perfection that time by Mastin. That was perfect. That was exactly the way you're supposed to do it. Excellent footwork on that. No question about it, and it looks like the quick hands of the Dallas-Fort Worth defense got the ball knocked off the leg of a hyena, so here come the Just Toops trying to tie or even take the lead with a three. Short corner, shot is up, and it's good! So a three-point shot and a one-point lead, just like that. The Hoops back on top. Having a hard time controlling it, come down the court, but it finds its way into the hands of a shooter right at the elbow, and that is good. So just like that, it's a back and forth game, Rich. It's a one point advantage for the Hyenas as the three is up, air ball, and a long rebound chased down by the Hyenas as they come the other way. Defense is set, however, for the Just Hoops. A nice floater in the lane over the outstretched arm. And again, the Hyenas continue to thwart that size with finesse and speed. And they're using it to their advantage. Or on the other end, Just Hoops is not. Uh, that last three that they rushed up, and they had plenty of time. It was just a terrible shot. That was a heck of a drive that time by Red McDonald. Drove baseline and drew the contact. And Red is, by the looks of him, about 5'9 or so. But I'll tell you what, that guy's strong upper body really can move around the basket, knows his way around the rim, knows all the angles, and he draws some contact. And he's a tremendous passer as well. That's what makes him dangerous on those drives as he misses the first. Well, we got five minutes to go in the first quarter. The Hyenas are up three, 17 to 14. See there, Hyenas kind of barking instructions. And McDonald misses a pair. So the lead stays at three. From the Hyenas, pressure defense by McDonald. Collision around half court, and they're going to call that a defensive foul. Oh, yeah. He's pleading his case <laughs> not for offense, work. but no, that's not <laughs> happening. That brings the ball in to the Hyenas, who pass down low. A nice mid range shot for Vigilance, missed off the back rim, and looks like it will be, oh, it's stays gonna stay here. Yep, down low, nice turn, nice hook, no good, good box out and rebound by Mastin, and here come the uh, Just two. He's, he just took that rebound. He really did, nice pass out, have to get into some trouble, finds its way into the corner, long three is no good, rebounded by the Hyenas, but stolen right away by the Just Hoops to retreat to the 
three-point area and try a three. Probably not the best shot selection as it goes off. And here come the Hyenas after the deflection on the offensive oh, rebound. Up and in. Oh, what a play. Nice tip. That was fast-paced basketball. A lot happening in the short period of time as it ends with the offensive tip-in by the Hyenas and a long three again by the Just Tubes. This time it is good. And for a team with so much size, Rich, you kind of mentioned it before, they are shooting a lot of perimeter shots, making some, missing some, but that seems to be their game plan. And I understand why, because they do have some shooters. Uh, Harris can shoot, Tucker can shoot. That time, the shot short by the but hoops. I'd, I'd like to see them go inside a little more. Hyenas up two, trying to extend it to a two-possession game. Coming down the lane, drawing the foul is Vigilance off of a nice feed, and he'll head to the line. Is that the second on uh, Maston? I believe it is. That sends Vigilance to the line. Doesn't, uh, doesn't look like they're pulling him out, so. There is a substitution on the floor. Uh, there we go. They're not taking him out, though. Okay. That's correct. As Vigilance tries the second, and he splits the pair, so it makes it a three point game as the Hyena's up 20 to 17. We haven't lacked for action in this. No, it's been an up and down game, and that one is, I think, blocked. So it's hard to say. In any case, here come the Hyenas pulling it back. Now trying a long three, and that one rims out and in again. But the shooter had no doubt it was going in. And that <laughs> that's the confidence right there. The way he ran back before it even went in. And it didn't look like it was going to, as the Hyenas have opened up a six-point lead, and now a foul is called down low. Again, they started outside in. Tucker taking that long shot. And that's going to send the Dallas-Fort Worth just hoops to the line. Cooper shooting the free throw, but a whistle before the shot. like an official question conversation official timeout we were going but again you like to see these officials manage the game with any kind of question and again we're going to have free throw here that another technical it has to be someone on the bench i didn't notice anyone on the court doing it right so and tucker misses the t and they're that, leaving a lot of points at the line they really are you're that's a good observation rich you're absolutely right about that as we return to formation and we'll see cooper try free throw One's good. Good form from Cooper. You like his form at the line. He he is a good shooter. He's very, very athletic as well. Watch him get up and down the floor. Try to keep your eye on him and makes a second. Yep, so two for two for Cooper. That makes it a four-point game, 23 to 19, as the first quarter begins to wane as we head under three minutes. A long shot by the Hyenas, no good. And a battle for the loose ball ends up in the hands of the Hyenas. A three is on the way, no good. Good box out and rebound by the Fort Worth team by the Just Toot. That's how you have to do it. Um, the Hyenas are getting a lot of second chances and a lot of extra opportunities. Good hustle they by have... Dallas Fort Worth. Oh yeah. Reaching foul is called. That appeared obvious. They are trying to plead their case, but again, I'm pretty sure this one is uh, staying with Dallas. There is no reason to foul someone away from the basket when the guy is not facing the basket at all. 
There is no reason for that reaching that far, that far away from the action. That's where your hands get you in trouble. You got to play defense with your feet. Rico is good. And that's frustrated me when I was coaching as well. If you have players with quick hands when they reach in, it's going to be a defensive foul 95% of the time. No question about it. That's just one of those that as you gain playing experience, you learn to avoid because, as you said, Rich, it almost always goes against you. And a nice entry pass down low. What a pass and seal. That was executed to perfection. It, it was a great pass. A great pass and great body position to just lay that in. And a timeout on the floor as a few seconds are added back to the clock. Three is a matter of fact. And this has been a competitive first quarter, Rich. Back and forth. Both teams have played interchangeably well and sloppy at times. But overall, as you said a moment ago, action has not been in short supply. It's been a very entertaining brand of basketball. Warts and all, it's been a very good first quarter. Absolutely. Um, you can overlook some of the offensive sloppiness when you see that much defense and that much hustle. A lot of effort. Bodies have been definitely flying. A lot of uh, loose balls, a couple of dives to the ground, a few nice plays along the baseline to save what could have been an out of bounds. And then you just saw that beautifully executed entry pass and steal from the Just Hoops moments ago. So overall, a very compelling first quarter as the Hyenas look to inbound and do. And a couple of good block shots too so far. Nice drive into the lane. No good. Rebounded by Mastin and a whistle on the floor. Looks like a push in the back, so it will just be a foul on the Hainas. No change in possession as Fort Worth will control. No pressure defense being applied here. Oh, this is going to make it interesting. Let's see how that quickness comes. Oh, they got a... <laughs> McDonald got away with one there. Yeah, she sure did. Nice long three up and no good. So long he was out of the shot. He didn't even see who shot it as the <laughs> hyenas come the other way. Nice entry pass and what a finish. Hey, right. Just Hoop should be taking notes. That's how you do an inside game. They have to start doing more of that. Good dribble penetration for Dallas Fort Worth and a beautiful bank shot off the window from about 10 feet. And just like that, Dallas Fort Worth back, I believe, up one as the block and Dallas Fort Worth is able to control down one excuse me so Dallas Fort Worth looking to take the lead here on this possession dribbling into the lane up and in what a finish by the little guard over the outstretched arms of the forward like I said last possession down he throws a great pass to get that bank shot he is normally known as a passer but he could take it himself when he has to what a shot from the short corner and i'll tell you what this quarter is ending just as it began with action up and down driving into the lane floater up off the window no good offensive rebound up and good count it and the foul that is brute strength no question about it as it was tucker who missed the initial shot rebounded and put in off the window cooper by cooper Cooper, I told you, he's an athlete. Watch him, as nice of a form as he has. He's tough underneath, and he's almost as big as Mastin. Yeah, not height as wise. Height wise, yes. Different body type, but certainly height is there as he rejects a shot there and collects it off the glass. That's how you want your guys to block shots, Rich. Keep the ball in play so ab it's not. Ab absolutely. Yep. I mean, the crowd loves it when you knock the thing out of bounds, but it doesn't do you any good. That's right. As the Dallas Fort Worth Hoops bring the ball into the lane on the ensuing possession and draw more contact. They're doing a very go good job getting to the line, but as you said before, Rich, they've missed some free throws. It's all they have to do is make them because they are getting a lot of them. The guards of 
Fort Worth have been very, very active at getting into the lane, both for attempted finishes and drawing contact, and also for creating space for outside and mid-range shooters, as the first one by Tucker rims out long. The hyenas were ready to run with that miss. Yeah, he's still got one more to go, however, as Tucker <laughs> makes the second. So it's a 30 to 28 affair as the hyenas look to push it in the waning seconds of this first quarter. That was a nice friendly roll on that, too. Sure was, and the steal almost took it out of his hands, coming the other way, up and good. What a play that time from McDonald. Nice. Nice. That's how we'll end the first quarter. So, Active hands all around. No doubt about it. We'll take a break. When we come back, quarter number two right here on the PBA Game of the Week. Hi, I'm Ben, and I'm with Wilson Basketball. Today we're going to talk about the Wilson Evolution. The Evolution is the number one selling basketball in the country, and for good reason. The first thing anybody will tell you is how good the Evolution feels. Most people can't describe it, but it's the microfiber cover that provides that great grip and that soft feel that everybody refers to. The channels share similar texture and material as the rest of the ball, which adds to the control and that feel that everyone's talking about. The cushion core offers a softer touch around the rim. What that means is that the ball will stay on the rim a little bit longer, allowing you the opportunity to make more shots. The Evolution comes in six different colors, so you can match to your jersey, or your own personal style. If you're looking for a game ball with soft feel that players swear by, check out the Evolution by Wilson. It's your boy Lucian George, aka Bowlegged Luke. Hello, my name is Demetria Ovalor. Kicking some freaking ass. <laughs> All righty, we're back. And Dallas Fort Worth continues to try to maintain their lead, which is a three point advantage as the hyenas come out firing, get a couple shots up, but no to no avail. And here come the Dallas Fort Worth squad down into the far corner and looks like they avoided the baseline not that time however as good job by the hyenas to use that baseline as a sixth defender that's defensive 10th intelligence 101 rich it absolutely is and offensive players have to realize that too sideline on offense is your enemy no question about it they are working on defense. Both teams are working defensively. The swarm is on. Tough, tough play there, and it looks like a timeout might be called as uh, the Hyenas had McDonald absolutely cornered. He was dribbling out of it, though. He was not going to. <laughs> he was not going to give that up. So that brings the Fort Hoops back into the front court as getting into the lane and missing but drawing contact yet again is Tucker. I'll tell you what Rich, it's the Fort Hoops drawing contact over and over again and for the most part it's David Tucker. It is. He is so quick if you watch his first step. 
Now, last week, when they played Hoop Goon, he had 21, and he did a lot of it on drives. That first step is tough for them to stop. But again, he continues to struggle at the line. Missing again, so we'll see if he can split the pair. But it, it's a four-point advantage as of this moment for Dallas, Fort Worth. And I'll tell you what, the Hyenas have done a very good job of creating pressure but to the credit of the just hoops they've not turned the ball over so much after the first part of the first quarter no they have taken much better care of the ball and if you notice they got it into mcdonald's hands more often good fake and a shot is up and good what a play ball control at its finest that was nice that was an outstanding fake and Tucker tries a tough shot and nails it from the free throw line. What a shot. Now that's a contested shot. I would say so. As you see the scoreboard update, 35-31. And the rebound tried to go with the outlet pass for the break, but it's stolen right back by the Hyenas who try a short corner three and knock it down. That's how you do it. That's how you take advantage of some good defense. No question about it, as Tucker tries a long three, but a whistle was blown prior to the shot. So here we are with the Hyenas and the Dallas was, Fort Worth chest hoops. That was another one of those moving picks that kill you. If you don't hold that pick, we had that issue last week too. Yes, we did. Very true. And here come they, the Hyenas. They will fall into the lane deflected by the interior defense of it looked like showtime carter but it stays with the hyenas as they control up top a contested tough shot blocked it looked like bat of the round last off the hyenas and it will be dallas fort worth ball did you see how high up carter got it's almost unfair i mean you can't, it's hard to get the ball over a guy when his arms are nine feet tall and he can jump four feet in the air on that block he was his arm was above, not just above the rim, but halfway up. Callum gets it into the lane. First drive attempt for him today, but it's taken away by the Hyenas. alley -oop is thwarted, but then followed up nicely as Texas continues to battle and is really neutralizing the size of Dallas-Fort Worth, Rich. They are. And again, they did it with quickness. It was a game of numbers at that point. They had they had numbers coming down, which is why the finish happened after the botched alley -oop attempt. And you know, one thing you like to see from Texas that you notice on a play like that is, remember just the play before we were talking about the sensational block from Carter and that didn't bother them at all. They're a very tough-willed team. They have a short memory, and that's what you want to see. Oh, absolutely. They didn't stop and think about it. Nope. They right, right back at them. Right that's back how at you them. do it. That's you exactly it. You have to. Absolutely. And beautiful job by them to stay right with the game plan. So here comes Dallas. Down one. Six minutes, 40 seconds to go in the second quarter. Again, in the red McDonald's hands to bring it up. And we'll call the ball back for the inbounds. Here we go again. So Red McDonald brings it up for Dallas Fort Worth, gets it into the corner. Looking at interior lane, nice floater up and good. What a shot! And wow. That's probably a goaltend, but apparently they got it just before it came down. So coming back the other way, two consecutive buckets for Dallas-Fort Worth. And they've all of a sudden opened up a three-point lead. Now they're using some of that speed that Texas has been using. And a missed dunk on the breakaway, that time by McCallop. And here come... The Hyenas back the other way, trying to capitalize on the missed shot and are unable to. McCallop gets a long rebound, has it deflected off of him, stays with it, goes to the ground, recovers, and here we go with McDonald. 
McDonald kicks it near side. No good off the back rim. Offensive rebound up. No good. Another rebound up, and this time it falls. Way to stay with it. That's how you do it. Was that McCallum? He, he had the initial shot attempt, I believe. But no, that was not McCallum that time. I believe that was... I didn't get a look at the finisher, but I think it may have been Cooper. Or was it Cooper? Yeah, I believe it was Cooper on the final finish. In any event, the hoops McCallops, now up five. McCallop's another one of those players. He's 6'7". He, he's lanky. He's long. He's a defender. He can slash. He can do a lot of the little things. So this far, team is loaded with guys like that. No question about it. And so far, it's been an up-and-down game. And it's gotten a little chippy, not so much in terms of guys getting at after each other, but getting after the ball, as there's been some plays on the ground recently. A lot of them. Each team has spent a lot of time on the ground. After a little explanation from the official, we're back in action. Here come the Hyenas. Good screen. Good contest. Shot goes long, goes back to the shooter. A runner in the lane, no good. Tipped, tipped a couple times. Finally controlled by the Hyenas. A mid-range shot is no good. Another offensive rebound. Then it was deflected going up and probably got away with a carry there. Did the Dallas Fort Worth hoops. But they maintain possession, driving into the lane as McCallop, kicking into the short corner, going back cross court, and a shot up by Cooper. And that one's off the front rim, rebounded on the bounce by the Hyenas, who bring it the other way. In and out. Offensive rebound up. No good. Another rebound. And there's a whistle. They'll say it remains with the Hyenas. I'll tell you what, Rich. A lot of effort, a lot of uh, energy being expended by these hyenas getting these offensive rebounds. They're getting a lot of second and third chances. You could almost say they're outplaying them. What a shot off the inbounds as the hyenas cut it to three. If that was drawn up, I like it. That was an excellently done play. Nice Executed pump. very well. No question about it. It's a nice entry pass leads to a foul off a good pump fake. McDonald got it down low. And Showtime Carter faked it. And then he gets to the line out the pump fake. You just look at the athleticism of Carter. I mean, you just, you just look at his the way he's built, and you just tell this guy's a basketball player. Oh, yeah. It shows all over him. His movement on the court. A little long on that first free throw. Just the way he just watch him get up and down the court. Very athletic. Still kind of coming to his own as a basketball player, but does make the second. Uh, but all the tools are there. And you can see him on full display when you watch this guy play. As and he's getting there. He is. No doubt about it. And the Hyenas, down two, trying to tie or take the lead. Nice away from the ball screen. Leads to a wayward shot. Another opportunity from the same spot, and this time it's good. He took that extra half second on the second shot. That will put the Hyenas up one. It'll be 42 to 41 as Carter hits a Oh, fade away. And that's exactly what you were talking about, Rich. That was nice. That, that's the part of his game he didn't have. That's right. That is the basketball skill coming out as, again, the Hyenas connect from long distance. And they continue to battle. They continue to keep this game close as McDonald gets into the lane and has it knocked away on the second attempt. But it ends up back with the Fort Worth squad as they try another one. Again, McDonald is off, this time rebounded by the Hyenas. Nice 
in and out dribble throws the defender but unable to convert another offensive rebound this time a long three is attempted no good and yet another rebound that's third third try this possession and again they miss this time it is cleared by the just hoops as Mastin coming down the lane and he just barrels over somebody I think they're gonna call a block though as it was in the restricted area and even if it wasn't, he was moving. Right. He's hard to keep up with for a guy his size. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get in his way either. No, absolutely <laughs> not. I want to live. I wouldn't do that. As the great Deion Sanders used to say, sometimes it's about making a business decision. That's right. <laughs> and you're making one with him if you just take a little step. Yes. So but for a guy that size, he moves so well. No question about it. And getting back to that shot a moment ago by Carter, Rich, as Mastin misses the first, that fadeaway in that short corner area, that 15-foot range, that's all basketball skill. Oh, it is. That's it one of the hardest shots you can take. And he has also worked on that. He was strictly an inside player until about a year and a half, two years ago. He spent a summer just working on range. Nice steal. Absolutely. Great nice play steal. by McDonald. McDonald takes it all the way in. Good play by McDonald and another poke this time from the Just Tubes, but it does stay with the Hyenas who make another one from way downtown. What a shot. That's one of the shots where the coach is going, no, 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 yes. <laughs> and after the miss by Dallas Fort Worth, here come the hyenas, and again a nice feed. This time a two-handed flush, and just like that, the hyenas back on top three. That was a perfectly executed break. I'll tell you one thing that stood out in this game amongst both teams is the expert veteran ball handling of McDonald. He has that ball on the string. And a nice move by Mastin, but great defense from the Hyenas, although Mastin recovers. Back out to McDonald. Long three is up. Out off the back rim. Offensive rebound corralled by Carter, who kicks it back to McDonald. Getting a feel for that ball. High screen. Carter for McDonald. Back to Carter. Three is on the way, and it's good. What a shot by Carter. It's a great pass, too. McDonald passes so well on the move. He's really got that ball under immense control when it's in his hands. He does. Crossover into the lane, no good. Rebounded by Mastin, hands to McDonald. He's surveying the situation now. Finds a shooter on the right wing, no good by Tucker. Rebounded by the Hyenas. They're boxing out extremely well. That was a beautiful finish going into the lane with their right hand. It was sort of like the backhand right hand. Kind of like in tennis, Rich, the backhand right there. It was. Beautiful play. It was. That was a really nice finish. A lot of contact, no whistle. Mastin down low. Now there's some whistle. You better hit him. If you're gonna if you're gonna try to stop him, you gotta bring the lumber, and they did. You know, with the way they're missing free throws, take some fouls. Absolutely. Make them earn points from the line. Mastin will head to the stripe with his team down two as we close in on halftime. Jeez, it nearly took a tackle to get the ball out of his head. <laughs> really did. A lot of strength there. As Carter takes his position on the block between two hyenas. Waiting on a hyena to take other position on the other side of the block. Always a risky thing to do is take a position between two hyenas. <laughs> yeah, usually that's not something even lions like to do. Not no laughing matter. You know what? You lose man points for that one. <laughs> I think you lose. I think you can lose a lot of credibility. I think I just saw some uh, views of this broadcast click off. I heard the clicks. Off of that corny joke. Those clicks were joke appreciation, my friend. 
<laughs> Unbelievable as Mastin makes both. So there you go, a tie game. Pretty much an even shot in game clock. So the Hyenas more or less can get the last shot here. See if that's what they look to do. They can build on the lead. Hyenas at the top. A three is good. So it does leave a few seconds on the clock for the Fort Worth team, but it looks like the pressure defense is going to prevent a shot from getting off. They do get one off, rims off, and that concludes the first half. At the half, the Texas Hyenas, 55. The Dallas Fort Worth Just Hoops, 52. We got a surprise guest for our halftime feature here on the PBA Game of the Week. Season opener. Now we got the man himself, Chris Terrell, commissioner, now joining us. Coach, a lot of people have just been talking about it. Like, this is very professional across the board. They loving the referees, everything that you got in place here. You got to be able to feel, you know, pretty good yourself, you know, about the first weekend. Yeah, we're real excited. You know, it's a great opening night for the, the South Division. And uh, yesterday we had a lot of games being played across the league nationwide in other cities. And, and this one in Dallas is going as planned as well. So we're really, we're really happy. But you know what? We're going to continue to, like building blocks, continue to improve every week. There's already notes that have been made about things that we could do to improve the, the overall uh, experience for fans and for sponsors, partners. So we're continuing to look for ways to grow. Yeah, myself, I got to say I'm definitely impressed as well as a lot of fans are. You know, this is great experience, great turnout, great vibes. You got the cameras rolling. So, it's uh, you know, you're doing an amazing job here. So not only did you talk, but you also like to say PBA. You were pro, you want the PBA when you walk in that walk after you already been talking the talk leading up to the day. Yeah, I want to encourage all the fans, uh, scouts, agents, uh, teams overseas, uh, head coaches, general managers overseas looking for high-level players. Go on Roku, go on Amazon Fire, download the PBA app. Starting next week, we're going to have all the games on TV, and so uh, really hope that, that you all check us out. All right, there you have it. Make sure you go to the PBA Roku channel, you know, so Amazon Fire. You know, we're live down here. So the PBA is what you want. And you can make sure you click it. Hey, subscribe to our channels. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, you know, Instagram. All of those things, all of those platforms, you know, you definitely want to keep up with all the up-to-date action with all these high-profile players and this great guy sitting in front of us right now. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, if you want pro, you want the PBA. There you have it, and we will be back from Louisville with a few post-game interviews as we close it out from the PBA Pubble. I'm Michael Wright. We'll be back shortly. All righty, we're back here after the halftime. Gary Aid, Rich Anselmo with you. Great to have you aboard. PBA Game of the Week, and it's been a good one, Rich. 55-52. to 52 as the Hyenas continue to thwart all size advantage of Dallas-Fort Worth. It, ironically enough, the thing they've struggled with the most in the first half is containing guard penetration, which has led to a lot of free throw attempts for Dallas-Fort Worth. True, and they're getting some good points inside, and they're getting second chances inside. That's just hustle. All hustle, no question about it. And Dallas-Fort Worth... both teams have worked hard. No question about it, as the Hyenas knock down a three right out of the gate and go up six as we start the third quarter. 
Nice shot by Sims. Sims has made a couple of big shots for them. As Carter tries another three, made one near the end of the first half, misses that one. Ball chased down by Mastin. Good hustle by the big man. Gets it across court. Wide open shot by Tucker at the top of the circle. Back off the back iron. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Hyenas. And it'll be McDonald inbounding here. Gets it into the outstretched arm of Mastin, working that baseline. Nice move by him. All body coming over. The help is Sims, and they're going to need more help than that to thwart Mastin, who just bulldozes his way up into the lane. Sims got his hand on the ball, but he got a hand on Mastin, too. Mastin, again at the line, makes the first. Now makes three in a row team's been living at the line tonight. But you know what? If you're the hyena, you can't really be too upset about it because you've gotten your money's worth on pretty much every one of those fouls as Mastin makes both. You have. You have. There's been a lot of physicality. <laughs> and I hate ticky-tack fouls. If you're going to take a foul, take a foul. Absolutely. Steal by Tucker. Coming the other way, alley-oop to Carter, and good defense by the Hyenas as they thwart that attempt. And a foul by Tucker, looked like almost an intentional foul. So he was out of position, good smart play, but it's like they're gonna give free throws. Nope, <laughs> they were trying to get, <laughs> it was uh, Sims trying to fake us into thinking they were free throws, but uh, the refs are like, no, 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 no. No, it was a half-court foul. <laughs> there was no free throws there. <laughs> that wasn't actually a flubbed attempt on the dunk to Carter as much as it was a bad pass. And a shot I mean, from the parking lot. What a shot from the Hyenas. They are unconscious from distance tonight. Driving into the lane, Hang has it deflected back to Mastin. Mastin with the hook, no good. Comes back to him again. Inside bully ball. They call a travel. And rightly so. He did. I've been impressed with these officials, Rich. They've done a very good job of keeping this game well in hand without being overbearing. They really have. You don't notice them. They haven't done things to stand out in a negative way. And the chippiness has been under control. It's been there. And we have a whistle this time. No basket on the second follow-up attempt. The foul on the offensive player. It looks like he gave him a little stiff arm. The old Heisman Trophy pose, Rich. Uh, he did. Looked like a running back trying to get away from a safety. <laughs> Just sticking that arm out. He... He didn't try to hide it. I'll give him that much. Uh, it was pretty, pretty flagrant, pr pretty blatant. Down into the box. Nice move up and in. Nice play there by Cooper, it looked like, as the Fort Worth just hoops. Inch closer, 61-56. And a steal by McDonald. Does he keep it in bounds? He does. Going the other way. No numbers. Wisely puts it out to Tucker. Tucker into the corner. Nice shot, but deflected from behind. And here come the Hyenas. It was a good defensive play. No doubt about it, as a step back three is no good. Rebound corralled by Cooper. Nearly stolen again by Glover. But here come the hoops as they knock it down. Nice shot from the corner. And it is now a two-point game. Another excellent pass by McDonald. Very, very fluid ball handler. Good shot from the top of the key there. Free throw line extended. Hyenas go back up four, 63-59. Excellent seven to form go. on that shot, too. No question about it. Good observation, Rich. No doubt about it. Driving into the lane, up and no good contact on both sides as they kind of help each other up. That was kind of cool. <laughs> Even they're getting a little smile about it. it. Looked like Sims, I believe that was Tucker from the foul line. 
Sims is definitely not the biggest guy in the world, but he is not afraid to get right in there. No question about it. And I believe the two go to the same bar, but very similar hairstyles, too. <laughs> Sims is a little cleaner. Yeah. Tucker makes the first. Yeah, Tucker was a spark plug for the just hoops in the first half, Rich. Really got to the line a lot. He did. He didn't take full advantage of it. And it could be tough for the hyenas if he starts making free throws because he gets there. He certainly does as there's some contact around the ball. And it looks like a push is called on just hoops. So side out. Hyenas will inbound. You see Tucker back in the screen here, providing a little bit of a little bit. Hey, we're here. Not much pressure though. That is made easily. Here come the hyenas back the other way. Driving into the lane. Big body, big strength. Nice play all the way around. I believe that was Dade on the finish. That was a real strong move. No question about it, as the Fort Worth squad tries to answer. Can't do it. Long three is off, and here come the Hyenas. Nice lead pass. Nice defense, but a good finish. And the Hyenas right back at it, Rich. They continue to play well in transition. That was like ultimate concentration on that finish. It really was, and Mason hits the short corner jumper. Aston, excuse me. I said Mason. Aston Jr. knocks down the corner shot as a free throw line jumper is no good by the hyenas. Tracked down by Aston Jr. Back into the front court. Here's McDonald. Driving into the lane. Nice move. Good block. Out of bounds. And stay with Dallas. It was a very nice block. Well played, was done smart. Uh, no chance for a foul doing block, taking that approach to a block. That time, good defense by the Hyenas forcing Mastin into a tough shot, he missed it. And here they come back the other way as Dane with a couple up and under moves. Mastin not to be outdone, made nice, made a nice contest as McCallop came over with the help thwarting the attempt. Coming back the other way is Dallas. And there is contact. Let's see who they call it on. It's on the hyenas. Catch the player, but it will send McDonald back to the line. Again, this is a very competitive, very entertaining game. I mean, this is not a game that you can afford to have too many consecutive mistakes. Both teams are making mistakes, but they're being intertwined with a lot of good plays. It's one of those type of games where if one team manages an 8-0 or a 10-0 run, that'll probably be the deciding factor. Right, because you really haven't seen that at all tonight. No, it's been back and forth the whole game. In fact, this is one of the largest leads we've seen this entire game as Dallas-Fort Worth makes a pair. McDonald up the line. McDonald cut it to three. Yep, there it goes. Updated on the scoreboard. And a nice hands by McDonald, but the hyena is able to keep it. Another deflection. This time it is taken by the oops as they come back the other way. He is Both up. Of these teams and have good. such good defensive hands. What a shot. Long three. No question about it. What a shot. I didn't see who that was. It may have been may have been Harris. In either, in either event, we have a timeout on the floor. 67-67. Back after Tie this. Tie game. That was Harris. It was. Cedric Harris with the shot. Back after this. Tie game on the PBA Game of the Week. Coming back from media timeout. Alrighty, we're back. Texas Hyenas, Dallas, Fort Worth tied at 67. Give us a few things that will be key in the last 14 minutes and 37 seconds of this one, Rich. For the Hyenas, 
keep doing what you're doing. Use your quickness, get down court, follow up shots, get second chances, continue to do that. For Dallas Fort Worth, get back to driving the lane and get into the free throw line. You seem to be hitting better this half. See how it plays out. I agree. They are hitting better free throws. They're shooting a much higher percentage in the second half as Dallas as the Hyenas bring it across midcourt into the lane. Floater is up. Off the back window. No good. Rebounded by Mastin. Tested outlet pass, but he gets in the way to McDonald. Here he comes up into the front court. Keeping his dribble far side. Stepping back. Surveying. Looking for a big man down low. He finds him. What a pass, but a bad miss that time by the Just Hoops as the Hyenas clear and come away. Here they go back down the other end, and a foul is called at the rim. Good contest. That's one of those fouls if you're a coach, Rich, you don't mind at all. Not at all. He contested the shot, and he made sure he didn't give him a chance for an and one. Good job. I'll take that. No question about it. Any coach would. McCallop picks up the personal. Sends Told you, McCallop's that defender, though. McCallop is a good defensive player. He has length. He has timing. He has ability. All key factors to being a good defensive player as Porter Jr. splits a pair. But an offensive rebound is controlled by the Hyenas getting back into the lane. No good. And the rebound this time by Tucker for Dallas. Here comes McDonald back the other way. Met by two defenders. Top of the circle, dribble, pull up, knocks it down. What a shot. It's a nice step back. He gave himself just enough room to get that off. Very nice shot. Now back on defense, McDonald trying to make it difficult and does for Glover, gets him to turn it over. Here comes McDonald the other way into McCallop and McCallop with one fake finishes nicely off the window. And just like that, Dallas is up four. Back nice. the other that's way. What I, that's what I mean. McCallop will just give you hustle. He's very much under control. He plays within himself. And that's something at this level a lot of guys haven't learned to do. And it stands out. The guys who have learned to do that, you can tell. I mean, McDonald is a great example of that. Tucker's another one. Dallas has a lot of polish in their backcourt. They do. They do. And McCallop, the same thing in the front court. Absolutely. Oh, you, you what a pass. Gotta, gotta finish that. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough miss. Nice finish for the hyenas. Yes, the, the hyenas finished. Uh, the, talking about the miss on the other end for Dallas. Yeah. Good clarification.
the genesis of this time out. In any event, Rich, while we have a moment, let's kind of review this. Um, when you take a look at how this game has gone so far for Texas, they've done a, for the Hyenas, they've done a fairly good job, but they seem to be maybe getting a little fatigued as they've played a very frenetic style to stay in this game. They have played so hard on both ends. They've really worked the offensive boards. They've been pesky defensively. Without a long substitution pattern, it's hard to keep that up for four quarters. And early, but I'm definitely not ruling them out. They're going to they're not going anywhere. No, that's for sure. And you know, one thing that's impressive even more so than the way they've played to this point is as you mentioned the style they've played is not easy to sustain with a relatively tight rotation as you were referring to and early in the season it's even that much more difficult to retain as you haven't had that practice time and perhaps your conditioning isn't where it's going to be later on this was such a quick turnaround from the draft to the season this is still like training camp to some players. Because not everyone came in at the same time either. That's right. Very fluid. A lot of times uh, kind of a summer league, if you will. Not necessarily on the calendar, but in terms of the way a lot of players at this level use these type of leagues. It's a way of showcasing themselves, trying to get to the next level, or perhaps for some, you know, trying to sharpen their skills or the level that they're already at as the ball is inbounded to the Hyenas. Maintaining the dribble, driving the baseline, going up and off the window. What a play from Sims. Sims has got a real nice handle. That was a good finish, too. It really was. As McDonald kicks it out for Tucker in the far corner who knocks it down. Good shot from David Tucker. And the Just Hoops are really beginning to put their thumb down on this game. Tucker needed to hit that. Whistle. He's in the backcourt. And it was on Dallas. So send the Hyenas to the line. And these are shots they need to make. They're starting to kind of fade a little bit. They're down 12, not out of it yet. But as we said earlier, Rich, this is the type of game that felt like if one team put on any kind of sustained run, which Dallas is flirting with doing, it could knock the other team out of this game. So these are important free throws as Sims they make the makes first. the first. Yep. They are. They can't afford to fall behind by any more than what they are. Yep, and Sims, and Sims back to makes the second. <laughs> it's like we know each other or something. I don't know. I think so. I think we've worked together once or twice. <laughs> As McDonald drives down the lane, misses a finger roll. That was a beautiful attempt. Just rolled out. And Dallas will go back on defense as Texas comes down the lane, driving into the lane, no good. Offensive rebound, no good. Tip finally does go. This time it is Dade on the follow and finish. He stayed right with it. That was nice. That That's persistence. What he a, just kept working the boards. What a spin move by Tucker there. Tucker. Nice pass down low. Good pass from McDonald. And what a shot to finish it off. That was Cooper. And long rebound comes back to Cooper. Tied up, though. And I believe that will be a jump ball. Let's see what the refs say. But, yep, it is a jump ball. And in this league, they jump as you see the two line up. I like that. I do, too. Porter Jr., Jumping. I don't want to see just a chance, you know, by chance. Well, the arrows with them. I want to see someone have to get it. I agree. And a turnover on the jump ball by the Just Hoops, and that will end the quarter. So as we head to the fourth, it's a 10 point game Dallas over Texas. <laughs>
first five minutes of this quarter are going to be clutch for the hyenas, Gary. See how they play as Dallas gets the ball to start the quarter. They can't let this get out of control. High screen, nice roll down the lane, but out to McCallop who drives into the lane, stuffed and taken away by the hyenas. Here they come, back the other way, and the ball is a hot potato again. Ends up in the hands of McCallop who throws it up ahead and a finish at the rim by, looks like, Cooper. And McDonald will get credited with the assist. It's a nice pass. And there's Cooper again, being in the right place at the right time. And after a miss, a good tough rebound by the Just Hoops coming the other way is Tucker dropping it down low, tried to drop it off. It went a little bit further than he expected, but McCallop, after he missed, got his own shot, kicks it into the lane, no good, and it will go the other way. Hyenas, alley-oop, up and good. Nice pass, good finish, and boy, did the Hyenas need that one, Rich. They sure did. They sure did. That was a great pass, perfect timing. That's how you have to do that. And again, Dallas-Fort Worth fell asleep defensively. They did. Of course, they didn't, they didn't fall asleep on offense. No, they executed almost the exact same play right back at Texas as Cooper finishes off the lob from McDonald. And here come the Hyenas trying to get it back, kicking into the top, off the hands, and into the hands of Sims. But he loses it, and it's taken away by Tucker. Here comes McDonald seen a lot of good things from Cooper this half as well. No question. And the steal by the Hyenas coming the other way. Another lob and another finish. And again, in the last few minutes, Rich, we've seen both teams make some nice lob passes. That one was beautiful. And again, Dallas-Fort Worth did not get back. Tucker gets it down low to Cooper. Down to McCallop. McCallop swarmed by two defenders and he passed it out, looked like maybe the Hyenas got a hand on it. So it looks like it will stay with Dallas-Fort Worth. Caleb comes out of the game, asked him back in. He's been out there for a while. I, I would, it was a smart move to take him out. If you're, if you're gonna need to bring him back in for defense, do it in the last three, four minutes. Nice shot. Yep, Tucker with the nice shot from the corner. Dallas has opened up a 12-point lead again with seven minutes and change to go here in the game. Tough shot. Hyenas have to do something now. That was a tough shot. Good shot there from the Hyenas to keep it within 10. That was a beautiful shot. It really was. That was no gimme either. He was well covered. Tucker misses. Big man chases it down. Aston using that body, getting into the lane, finishes through the contact. It's almost like the guy wasn't there. It's big physical. He just gets there. He just gets to where he has to go. And a lot of commotion Look on the floor. This. Wow, what a scrum. And it ends up as a turnover by the hoops. As Went to a basketball game and a rugby scrum <laughs> broke out. Wow. Just an absolutely entertaining game from start to finish. Both of these teams playing very, very physically. It's just a beautiful game to watch as the Hyenas get into the lane, get run out of real estate, quickly kick it out. No good on the long shot. Ball batted and ends up in the hands of the hoops as McDonald brings it across the timeline, kicks it out, and it's deflected out of bounds. But they say last touched by Dallas, so we'll be Hyena basketball. It looked like the hyenas hit it. That's what I thought too, but. There must have been something behind that play that we couldn't see from our vantage point. So the hyenas will inbound to the left of the Dallas bench. Instead of a methodical pace across the timeline. Now into gear. Sims kicks it out. Lover tries a shot, no good off the front rim, rebounded down low, bats around, and Mastin comes away. Tucker 
drop pass to Mastin, and ouch! Uh, uh, gotta give the guy the charge call there, right? I mean, just for the bravery <laughs> alone. <laughs> he didn't get it. <laughs> oh, man. Talk about adding insult to injury. I mean, that was a bang-bang play, maybe restricted zone. But my goodness, if you have that much guts to stand, step in front of that guy, I think you deserve the call. <laughs> and he took the brunt of that collision, too. Absolutely. As Mastin misses the first, getting a good laugh about that is Sims along with Tucker. Man, that hurt. <laughs> and Tucker probably said, I know it's happened to me in practice. Yeah, that's right, as Mastin misses both, but an offensive rebound by Dallas keeps it alive for Tucker. Back to Mastin. Ball fake, spins baseline. Nice reverse, in and out. And he's so frustrated to put the hands on the head. No doubt about it, as Glover dishing. Swishing, what a play right down the lane, count it and a foul. That was an excellent finish. He went up strong. Williams on the finish that time. Check that Porter Jr., excuse me, Porter Jr. on the finish. And again, the one. play was made by Glover. No question about it. Being a shooter, and they knew it, so he was crowded, he made the right pass. And Porter Jr. makes a free throw. And some discussion by the officials. Caleb is back in the game for Dallas. And it looks like you have Donald out there as well. As Donald Sims having a good laugh. So we're after some discussion, it's a 10 point game, 94-84. Dallas Fort Worth is up 10 with the basketball pending a signal from the official. Just under six to go. Donald gets a high bounce and walks it up the court. Good pressure, defense applied and deflected. Nice play by the Hyenas. Good job getting back by Dallas and a rejection, but then a dunk on the other end. My goodness, what a sequence. That was excellent defense, excellent offense. That was a great series. Again, emblematic of this game, just energy and action start to finish. Really entertaining basketball. Good shot by McCallop from the corner, and it is good. Dallas-Fort Worth needed that. Texas did not. No, they didn't. As Sims, nice dribble, gets it down low, and a foul is called. I believe it was on the floor. Let's we'll see what the officials say conference again and you love the communication level of these officials they don't take anything to chance they're all three of them are excellent communicators amongst themselves and there doesn't seem to be any ego there's no question it's just a matter of well let's get this right and let's make sure we talk about it absolutely whenever there was a question there was a discussion yes and a lot of officials won't do that. I give credit to all three tonight. No, it's been a great crew. It really has. And um, it's made a big difference in this game. Uh, this is the type of game with the physicality and the energy and the back and forth. A different official crew may have had a different result. Like, there were opportunities in this game where it could have gotten out of hand. Uh, but a credit to both the officials and these teams. These teams are full of really mature, level-headed players. There there's a, a, seems to be an overall sense on the court of it's basketball. Right. And it's two teams from the same state. So it's, it's going to be a rivalry. It's going to be a little chippy. You're going to see that. And what you said was absolutely right. It never got out of hand. We approach the, well, it's exactly five minutes to go in the game. And Gary Aid and Rich Anselmo with you. It's been a fun game to call, that's for sure, as the hyenas inbound it. There's no lack of action today. No doubt about that. And a pass down low is knocked out of bounds off the hands of, I believe, McDonald. 
And that will give Texas the ball with only about five seconds on the shot clock. So a, um, it's going to be a tough play to get it inbound from near your own basket off the right there. Got to get this off. And it's deflected out of bounds. Going the other way. Just as yeah, well. 24 second violation. They called the violation before it went out of bounds. There you go. Yep, I was just going to say just as well because I believe it was a violation at the same time. So there you have it as Tucker walks it across for the hoops. Tucker over to McDonald. Down low to Mastin. And oh, what a mismatch down low. And goes right to work. Up and misses it, though. That's a tough miss. That's one you want to convert. That was a serious yeah. size advantage on the block right there for Massey. I think that was too easy. We'll remain with Dallas as McDonald. Interesting, Rich, that McDonald has inbounded the ball a number of times in this short court situation, which you don't usually see for that exact reason, a turnover on the inbound pass. Uh, usually you go with your bigger players on those plays. He is such a good passer. And that was the first turnover, I think, all night from him inbounding the ball. Yep, it sure Not was. Dallas enjoying an 11-point lead, deflecting the alley-oop attempt. Ball goes out of bounds. I believe it was last touched by Dallas. Let's see what the call is. Oh, we'll give it to Dallas. So, last touched by the Hyenas. Uh, I, was, I wasn't sure if... It was Sims or McDonald that hit it. And again, you see the Wilson insignia there on the game ball. Wilson Sporting Goods, the official game ball of the PBA. McDonald brings the Wilson across the timeline off the inbound. Keeps his dribble. Pulls up for a beautiful shot. What a play by McDonald. That is as tough a shot as there is in basketball. Those contested short corners. It doesn't get more difficult than that. And Sims was all over Oh, him. he was in his jersey. Just, they're, still, they're still going back and forth about it. Now, is that a shot as a coach, Rich? Did you encourage those type of shots, or were you one of those guys that wanted to keep away from mid-range shots at this level? No, those corner shots I like because it's the easiest three in the book. It's the closest three-point shot. And so many other spots in the court, that distance is only worth two. Mm. What about so those, those short mid-range shots? Those though? didn't bother me. It depends on the player. Nice steal. Yeah, Lover with the steal. No good on the three. Rebounded by McDonald. Pressure defense being applied as the clock becoming a factor for Texas, who are down 11. Getting into the lane as McCallop stripped and taken away. Here comes Sims coming the other way. Leading into the fast break, going right down the lane. Ball knocked out of bounds. Contact as well. Let's see the call. Should have made a pass there. They had numbers. Should not have taken it himself. He went into where the two Dallas defenders were. Glover with a three. Big shot for the Hyenas. And it's down to an 11-point advantage. They needed that. Just hoops at the century mark. Stolen again by the Hyenas. This time it's a two on two. Glover, a tough three, bad shot probably. Rebounded by McAuliff, spins away from the defense, comes back the other way, loses it, gets it right back, and they're gonna say a double dribble, probably a good call. Yeah, it was. 100 to 89, three minutes and one second to go. The Hyenas are running out of time. They have to do something here. They need a few defensive stops, and they need a few buckets. And like do that not one? Force, and do not force the contested shots like they did last time. That was a really good shot. Good shot from the far side wing. Cuts it to 8. 2.43 to go. McDonald at the controls. Deflected and taken away. Here come the Hyenas. Back the other way again. This time for three, and it's good again! What a shot! Nice shot by Sims. McDonald 
pulled up on that. Some pressure defense. And a steal from behind. Here come the Hyenas going the other way. Getting to the lane. No good. Offensive rebound on the follow is good. Sims on the steal and driving a nice follow-up. It's a game. Just like that. A 12-point advantage cut to three. And now, all of a sudden, the clock not a factor anymore. Only a three-point game, one possession game. And, Rich, for a game that looked like it was getting away from the Hyenas, you said it about 90 seconds ago. They had to do something now. And, boy, have they. A nice 6-0 run to cut it right down from 8 to 3. Or from, uh, I'm sorry, 9 to 3. And I'm not surprised. I'm really not. This team does not seem to be a lie back and just let it happen type of team. They they went after this. Well, that would not make them good hyenas if they just lied back. That's not That's what hyenas true. do. That's right. And, you know, credit to them, too, on the last steal. Getting a steal off of McDonald is no easy feat. No, and the double team is what did it. A very well executed double team. It was almost like a one in front and one in back, like a trailing double team, and it was that trailer that poked the ball loose. And then did a smart thing. Once he poked it, took off the other way. Good transition defense and offense by the Hyenas has keyed this run, and as the teams come back onto the court, a few final discussions, it looks like, by the three officials. And now Dallas Fort Worth is sitting there going, what, 218? This game should be over. <laughs> Inbounds. So there's more there's more time than they'd like. Yeah, well when you're in the game like this, you're the team of the head. You want the clock to go ten seconds at a time. Tucker working the ball in that short corner, kicks it out dangerous pass, but does find McDonald. McDonald into the lane. Short corner again, this time well inside the three-point line. Spinning and swishing is Mastin. What a move by the big man. He has great footwork. That's a tough shot, but what a shot by Glover. Another tough mid-range shot. That's the second one like that he's hit. And now a trap being applied. Gets the, gets the ball. Offensive rebound tipped out. Goes to Tucker. Tucker bringing it across for Dallas. Pressure being applied throughout as Dallas. A bad turnover by Cooper. Yeah, it really was. But looks like they get it right back. Um, Cooper. Going back the other way. Yep. Cooper inbounds it. Here's Sims. 102 to 100. Inside two minutes. Right down to the wire here. Cooper. Turn around. Bounces in, but I believe there was a whistle before the shot. Let's see the call. It was, a, it was a call made, so the shot by Cooper it will was not before count. The, yep. It was before the shot. Inbounds, down low, Cooper again. Same spot, same result. <laughs> the shot. Like, all right, give me that again. Let's, let's do that. Let's do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Tie game. 80 seconds left. This is basketball at its finest, ladies and gentlemen, as McDonald gets into the lane. Nice left-handed shot, but does not go in. Bodies flying. Of course, they are. Mastin's around. Even his teammates aren't safe. And they say it's a... One point advantage for Dallas now. Fifty six seconds to go. I guess a three was a two. In any event, Aina's trailing one. Inside, quarter is up. No good. Rebounded by the Fort Hoop as it looks like McDonald down there in the trees. My goodness. Another timeout on the floor. Let's see 
both teams heading back to their respective benches. 40 seconds as of now on the clock. 102-101 is the score on the scoreboard. If you're the hyenas here, Rich, what's your plan for these last 40 seconds? Try to get the ball back as quickly as possible. Try to get the advantage. Both teams are probably going to do the same thing. Dallas-Fort Worth comes down and takes a shot right away. They've got a two-for-one opportunity. Hyenas need to get it defensively. Then come down and get a shot and play a two-for-one that way. You want the last shot in a game this close. Are you fouling yet? No. No, because unless there's an offensive rebound, you're going to get the ball back. So Dallas will inbound. There is some pressure being applied. That's Glover pressuring Tucker. Tucker gets it. Glover stays right with them. Tucker spins away, trying to use his body to shield himself. Gets into the lane, loses it, but recovered along the baseline. Back out to Tucker. Crossover dribble, right to left. Pulls up, shot, no good. Rebounded by Maston down low, and it goes. What a play by the big man. Just like that. Dallas-Fort Worth up three, and man, is this a critical free throw. If he misses this, you're still all right. If he makes this, you got to get down quickly and score and then foul. Off the front rim, rebounded by the Hyenas. Here we go. Shot clock and game clock equal. One-on-one, -on -one. Sims. McDonald, hard screen, shot is up, no good. Rebounded by Mastin, out ahead to McDonald, running away. Hyenas have to foul here, unable to do so. And they finally call it. I think it was, the foul was given in about seven seconds. We'll see how much time they put back on the clock. As of right now, there's five seconds on the clock. And McDonald did a good job there, Rich, to avoid contact for a long period of time. He made five or six seconds out of that happen. And McDonald with a chance to ice the game. First one is good, and that's the big one. It is now a two-possession ball game with five seconds to go. That should about do it, barring something crazy, with one more free throw coming. It's up. No good. Probably an interference call should have been made there, but in any, either case... Dallas will get it off, and there is no call. I believe no call. I think that's the game. So the final that's score it. of this one, 107 to 101. The Dallas-Fort Worth just hoops outlasting the Texas Hyenas. Great stuff today, Rich. A very exciting game. And as we wrap this one up with the PBA Game of the Week postgame show presented by Wilson Sporting Goods, give me your thoughts on this game that we just watched here. It was probably one of the better games you're going to see. Both teams played hard. It was a little sloppy at times. It was definitely testy from both teams. It was just, there was a lot of hustle. The game had everything. Really did, and a lot of tenacity good job some some things with the scoreboard at times but the officials doing a great job it really didn't affect the game at all it was just it was well managed and I think that everything played out very very well this is a very good game good presentation I think uh, overall just a very exciting brand of basketball and like you said it had everything you had some threes you had some post play you had some steals you had some defense you had a couple of charges in there and a number of guys made a bunch of significant con uh, contributions to this one rich starting with dallas fort worth give me your two or three guys that you think made the biggest contribution well maston i really liked a lot tucker mcdonald those are the three, but McCallop and Cooper also played very well. They did, and I'll... we didn't see as much of Carter, but what you saw, you know what he has. Yes, you saw a couple of flashes of it 
in the first half especially. He made a tough turnaround shot. He made a three, couple of plays, one sensational block. Looked like he went up and grabbed a star out of the sky. Um, just an incredible athlete, as you mentioned. Not as many minutes as maybe you were expecting, but the minutes you saw, he was productive and he was part of the team. He didn't try to upstage anyone. And you No, very unselfish player. Very much and so. And think about it. He didn't come to terms with the team that drafted him. Who knows how long he's been here? It's a good point. It's a very good point. And for the Hyenas, I'll tell you what, this was a group effort all the way around. No one individually really stands out for me. The one guy that I think made the most plays down the stretch was Glover. He kind of was slow to get started, but when he got going, man, that guy can flat out shoot. He can. Sims, too, on both ends. Sims defensively, Sims on, with ball handling, driving to the basket. He made some excellent plays. They got a lot of good contributions, but yeah, uh, uh, Vigilance did some nice things inside. Dade strong on both ends, but Glover and Sims were the two standouts to me. It was an excellent game overall. I was very impressed with the offensive rebounding of the Hyenas, overcoming a lot of size disadvantage throughout this game. Really, the size difference in this game was not a factor, which was surprising because there was a significant advantage for Dallas-Fort Worth in that department, Rich. But really, that's not what decided this game. This game was pretty much decided by one or two extra plays made down the stretch by the Fort Worth Just Hoops and a couple of timely free throws. They struggled in the first half with their free throw shooting, were much better in the second half, and I think that was the deciding factor in this one. I agree. I agree completely. They made the one or two extra plays. That run they made mid-fourth quarter yes, from early to mid-fourth quarter really determined it. The hyenas really expended a lot of energy coming back. And we said that late in the first half that whoever was able to put together a quick 7 8 0 run would probably win this game. And that's exactly how this played out. It was. That's exactly what did it. So they, and it was a great game. Oh, it really was. A lot of excitement. Very, very fun game. Good game to be a part of the PBA. It is an absolutely exciting league, and it's very much fun to be a part of. For Rich Anselmo, I'm Gary Aid. Once again, final score tonight, Dallas-Fort Worth Just Hoops 107, Texas Hyenas 101. We'll see you again tomorrow as Paul McKeskey and I call the second game of our two-game feature this week. It is the PBA Game of the Week brought to you by Wilson Sporting Goods, the official sporting goods supplier of the PBA. Again, for Rich and Samuel, I'm Gary Aid saying so long. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and thanks for watching this presentation of the PBA. This presentation of the Pro Basketball Association is presented by our sponsors. Benita's International Academy. Reach higher, no limits. With Benita's International Academy. Wilson Sporting Goods, the official basketball of the PBA. And Grip Spritz. Court traction is important. No licking, just sticking with Grip Spritz.